So if you've seen my last videos, you'll know that I've been playing around with the phenomenon of proton resonance. And uh, I got a number of emails uh, with questions about the details of some of those signals, which I'll try to address today. The most common question was whether or not the gradient echoes and the beat effect in the context of the 1D image are audible or not. And so in order to clear that up, I'm going to actually play for you some recordings of um, each of those signal contexts. So the first one is just the straight proton magnetometer setup, which is shown here. Just the receiver and the one coil filled with water. So it's going to take me a second to open that file, so bear with me for a second. So this is just the normal free induction decay signal. Alright, so the next thing I did was to introduce a gradient using this gradient coil, which I slide on to the coil like this, and um, it applies a gradient in this direction, which um, allows me to destroy the coherence of the spins in the water and um, when I reverse the current through it bring them back into phase again and the signal will re-emerge. So I have a recording of that and I've slowed it down by two octaves to make it a little bit more audible. So once again bear with me while I open that file. So the first one's a normal free induction decay. The next two have gradient echoes. And uh, this last one takes a few seconds, I think, but it's a nice long echo. So I hope that will be audible. I'm not really sure how this is going to come across, but um, anyways. So the next one I did was to try and take a 1D image and um, how I did that was to slide these two water samples out so that there's a little gap in the middle there. And um, I also applied a gradient along this axis, along, down the axis of the coil, to make each sample ring at a different average frequency. So in order to do that I needed a different coil because I can't actually just turn that other one sideways. You need a gradient of the main field along each axis, not a gradient along each axis. So anyways, um, it's a bit more complicated, but this is the coil that I used. It has two X's, and um, these two windings form a Helmholtz coil type of thing on this side, and um, these two windings form a Helmholtz coil type of thing on the other side, but with the opposite polarity. So the field is kind of pointing down on one side, it's zero in the middle and it points up on the other side. That's exactly the gradient I need to get these two samples to ring at different frequencies. So the problem with this measurement is that um, the SNR is a lot lower since the coil is mostly filled with air instead of proton rich water. So once again bear with me while I open the file. And uh, the noise is a lot worse in this one so so you know. That's a normal fit. That's with the gradient. Normal again with the gradient. So yeah, I hope that effect is audible. I really don't know how this is going to turn out. Alright, so the last coil I wound and played around with is this regular Helmholtz coil. And um, this is not a gradient coil. This actually just modulates the total field strength. So I'm going to play a couple clips of what I can do with this thing. So by changing the total field strength, I'm changing the total frequency. So that was just uh, normal ones followed by slowed down by one octave for greater audibility. And um, the last thing I did was to put a sine wave of current through this outer coil. So let's listen to that. And this one's my favorite, it's kind of a Star Trekian sound. So 
So that's it for the signals. I um, I hope those came through clean. Um, the other question I got a lot of was about the details of the receiver, the amplifier, and the, about the circuit and so on. And um, I'm going to cover that in another video because this is already getting pretty long. So that's it. Thanks for watching.